So presumably engineers are trying to figure out exactly how the damage is done and what you can do to protect yourself from it. And they do experiments on the ground at these sort of speeds? Exactly, that's right. So it's what we call hypervelocity testing, as in accelerating something tens of thousands of kilometers an hour, slamming it into material to see, all right, well, what's going to happen to our satellite? What's going to happen to a human? Well, we kind of know what's going to happen to a human. And what can we do to minimize it? Uh, and here's a great example from ESA. You know, this is a metal slab that they put in and shot a, a little ball at 30,000 kilometers an hour. And, and you can see it cut through half of it like nothing. And in fact, it's also understanding the fracturing pattern here. So even though the impact happens from up top, there's enough... It didn't enough... get all the way through. It blew a crater in the side. But exactly. It's, it's the shock wave from that's gone down and peeled a layer off the other side. Exactly. That's right. So this is really important for understanding what it means to spacecraft, because yes, it's not just the cratering from the impact. But as you said, imagine we had our critical electronic system there, our CCD. Well, now the shock wave has just fried that CCD. So how can we build it? How can we insulate it? How can we make it? So there's a lot of work that goes into shooting these balls through either different layers of material. So you can see here's a little steel ball shot through different layers of plates. And they monitor how the explosion essentially happens. How does it hit it? How does the impact travel through the material, creating that shock wave through the other layers? Because satellites are obviously not just one empty box. There's different layers to them. So you could just say, hey, well, why don't we build our satellite really sturdy? Well, there's problems with that, but it still may affect the inside of the satellite uh, and not be useful as well. So this is much like protecting tanks for the yeah. military. They're trying to stop fast moving projectiles coming in called enemy shells. Yep. And they all have you know, multiple layers, ceramic composites, reactive, all the things that they do for that. Um, but of course, it's a trade off. I mean, you can make a tank that's completely impregnable if you have a foot thick titanium all around, but then it would weigh a million tons and not be able to move. <laughs> exactly. Likewise, you could build a heavily armored spacecraft that looks like a tank, but that's going to go big rocket to launch it. <laughs> that's right. So, so it's these trade offs. How do we make the material and what the material is? And how do you layer it and structure it in a way that makes it as efficient and lightweight as possible? Because space has the drastic problem of, yeah, we need to preserve that weight to get it going. And so this is, in fact, uh, studies in the lab where they take different speeds of projectiles. They put it into different materials and different types. So here's a steel projectile. Here's a copper one. Here's an aluminum one. And then how big it is. And essentially measure what is this stuff doing? Because the impact of the material, the material itself, and the projectile itself will all do varying amounts of damage. And when you put it into space, you don't know what you're going to get hit by. You're not going to say, I'm only going to be hit by pieces of paint, so I only need to test myself for pieces of paint. And that's presumably where studies like the Space Shuttle and um, Hubble Space Telescope, when they tell us what range of things are currently up there, what fraction is paint, yeah. what fraction is old screws. I mean, what, what are these really small ones? How many really small, as opposed to just moderately small ones are there? Exactly. It tells us about the range of things uh, that we see. And so this is a, a good animation of what they're doing. So this is a combination between uh, University of Texas and NASA. So they took different layers. So here they'll take an aluminum projectile, but they have aluminum sheets mixed with Kevlar, Kevlar being for... You may put buffets. Exactly. And there's a reason why. Yes. And so they put aluminum, their Kevlar, and another aluminum plate. And then you'll see what happens when they shoot a projectile three millimeters wide at seven kilometers per second. So you can see, obviously, the first layer is just goes through like butter. The second layer, which is that Kevlar, shatters, but it does end up potentially absorbing a bit more on the back plate. And this is how we understand and start to build spacecraft. This is why there's so much work now going into the materials of this stuff because they're now realizing, depending on what it is and how it's laid out, they can potentially resist some of these impacts and limit some of this damage.